What are the most important Photoshop tools that every composite photographer beginner needs to know? If you're new to Photoshop and composite photography, you probably already know that compositing isn't easy and that Photoshop can be super frustrating. So frustrating, in fact, that many photographers that are new to Photoshop will give up before they even start and go back to making average boring pictures. Well, I don't want that to be you, which is why I'm gonna help you get started with these five Photoshop tools. Starting with the lasso tool, then we're gonna to move to the brush tool, then the clone stamp tool, and then the erase tool, and then finally the pen tool. Okay the Photoshop versions of those tools. Now, it's important to know that these are only five Photoshop tools that you're gonna need to know to really create amazing composites, but there are a whole lot more tools that we're gonna get into in later episodes here on YouTube, which is why you should subscribe to my channel below. For now, let's crack open Photoshop and take a look at our first tool, woohoo, the lasso tool. All right, so hopping right into this, the first Photoshop tool that I want to address is the lasso tool. It's a really good tool. I use it for a couple different things specifically only, but it is a tool that I use on just about every, actually it's a tool that I use on every single composite that I create. So using this image here, which is called the close call, uh, we're gonna use our lasso tool and do a couple of quick things here for you to just see how it works. So. For me here, over here, uh, let's just come in close and then I'm just gonna kick the, uh, hit the uh, keyboard shortcut of L for your lasso tool. And if you wanna flip through three different versions of that, which is the polygonal, the magnetic, or the lasso tool, and you can go up here and do this actually and do it, but that's not very efficient. So to make it a little bit more efficient on your keyboard, if you hit L, you'll select the lasso tool. And then if you shift L, you can flip through those different tools. All right, so just a basic lasso tool. How I use this is I'll come in here and I'll just take a general selection of my head and then command control J to copy that. And then I can command or control T to transform it. And then I can make my head really, really big and weird looking, all right? Not that I'm not weird looking enough already, but that's looking pretty weird there. All right, so that's one way that I use the lasso tool. Another way you can use it is if you want to just basically select a specific area here like this and then go in here with your brush tool and then specifically paint that area. It's super easy to do. Uh, you can just be very, you can be a lot more specific than if you're trying to uh, come over here and try to do it, you know, very specifically. So a lot of specifics there. Anyway, let's get rid of that layer here. Uh, and then lastly, Real quick, if we're on the lasso tool and I go to my magnetic tool, I can come in here and click and then just follow this hatchet and then the head of the hatchet here and let Photoshop do all the work for me to make a selection. It's not perfect, you gotta be careful. As you can see there with my finger and then Command J and you can see, boom, there's your selection. That is the lasso tool which is a really good tool. All right, so the next Photoshop tool that I'm going to talk about is the paintbrush tool, which is one of my favorite, mostly used tools in my toolbox, my Photoshop toolbox. So again, going into our composite here, and let's say we're gonna use this uh, hatchet handle here. I'm bring that up, and then I'm just gonna bring in another layer here and attach it real quick. And so basically, if I'm gonna use my brush tool, I go to B, and that's my shortcut for the brush tool. So I, or I could come over here and I could select between any of these four tools or hit B on your keyboard and shift B will flip through those different tools for you. All right. So we're just going to use the brush tool and I'm going to come in here with my hardness, my feathering at zero. And then I'm just going to paint in a little bit of shadowing right here. So I use this all the time and with my uh, composites, I'm always using the brush tool. It is a paint brush, basically. All right, so that is one way you can use it. 
We come up here and we're gonna bring our hardness up there. You come to your palette and I'm just kind of giving you a really quick, uh, you know, I guess, demonstration of this. So if we come over here to our uh, hair brush, we can create hair with that. We can create uh, water uh, splashes with this. Uh, depending on what kind of brushes you have in your palette, you can come up here and use different brushes here and create a different effect up here like that uh, versus this versus a pencil versus a feather brush. A lot of different options here. Very cool brush, very dynamic. And then you can make it a really hard edge you can make it a really soft edge, just like that. So a lot of different uses with the brush tool in Photoshop. All right, so moving on, the next Photoshop tool in the toolbox we're gonna look at is the stamp tool. So moving on over here to the image of me, I'm gonna blow it way up so we can look at my ugly facha. All right, so uh, my ugly facha there. So to select, the uh, clone stamp tool, you can come over here to the keyboard here and actually select it here. Or if you want the quick and efficient way, your keyboard shortcut will be the S. All right, so clicking S will give you the clone stamp tool. And then obviously Shift S will help you flip through the tool options there that you have with the clone stamp. So with my clone stamp tool, I'm gonna get rid of some of these sun damage on my face here. And I'm just gonna come in here and you wanna make sure that you're, uh, let's go up to a different layer there so we're not messing up the original layer. Uh, but you can go up here and make sure that you're on current and below, all right? If you're on the current layer, then I'm not gonna be able to fix anything because that layer, since I'm on my own blank layer, has nothing to uh, clone stamp from. If I'm on my current and below area, then anything that's current on this layer or below it will be stamped or cloned and then stamped onto the new layer. So basically what I'm doing is I'm cloning a area from anything under this original layer or this layer one, and then I'm stamping it onto my blank layer one. So I'm gonna come in here with my Alt or Option. I'm gonna click and make a selection of where I want to clone from. So I wanna clone from here. So I tap on the that area and then I come over here and I paint it in. All right, so I clone and paint. I clone and paint, clone and paint. So this is a really good brush to come in and uh, fix a lot of uh, issues with uh, blemishes and skin problems and things like that. Now it has limitations, I'm not gonna get into that right now, but uh, it's a really good general tool to be able to use to come in and and make some quick, easy changes and get rid of some of these age spots. And uh, I'm not getting old, but you know some of these spots that you have on the skin. And you can come in here and do it under the eye if you want. It's a little more difficult, but you can kind of do it like that. Anyway, that is the clone stamp tool. I use it every image to get rid of a lot of skin damage and issues with people's skin. And if there's hair, hairs on the shirts and things like that, really great tool to just quickly uh, get rid of a lot of those small little details that uh, are bothering to the eye. Alrighty, so now before we move into the next two Photoshop tools here, it's important for you to know that whether you're a custom furniture builder or a brain surgeon or even a composite photographer, you're only as good as your ability to master the tools that you're using. Imagine walking down to your favorite local brain surgeon and he's fumbling the scalpel that he uses and doesn't know how to turn on the laser extraction machine. Knowing how to use and master the tools of your trade will directly determine how successful you are. Just ask any of our newest Patreon members who not only have invested in mastering their craft of composite photography and Photoshop, but who are supporting these videos and the compositing magic we're creating with Photillustrator. Thank you, Chad Coyle, L. Pippen, Michelle Mallard, Pam Weiss, and Rach O'Carroll. I sincerely appreciate the, from the bottom of my heart 
your support and for allowing me to help more photographers discover and learn what I believe is the best photographic medium on the planet, and that's composite photography. Thank you so much. And if you want to be one of the cool kids on the block like these amazing photographers, go to patreon.com slash photillustrator and choose a support level that best fits you and your goals. As always, however, no pressure. Now, let's get back into Photoshop. All right, so the next tool that we have in our Photoshop toolbox that I want to go over is the Erase tool. Now, the Erase tool is super, super, super important, as you will see here in just a second. And if you want to access this tool very quickly on your keyboard, it's just the letter E. All right, of course, you can go over here to the Erase tool and you can select different Erase tools, the Magic Erase tool, the Back ground erase tool or the erase tool. Um, really, I just use the erase tool. So that's what we are going to do today. So if you wanted to flip through those, of course, shift E will help you flip through those different tools. So moving over here to the image that we are going to work on of me and let's say, Ooh, I am in drag, <laughs> right? That is quite the scary effect right there. So, uh, let's say that um, I'm going to add a shadow into this to create more light uh, directionality. So I'm going to add this shadow over here, and then I'm going to tone this shadow down to somewhere around there. But this edge that you see right here is too strong. And so I want to soften that down. And the best way I do it is grab my erase tool at 10% opacity, and I come in here and just start feathering that out and you can see that kind of blend in that line just automatically blend in with our shadow and so that makes it look a lot better right there so from flat to there right there like that and i can bring this up a little bit more and then i just blend it a little bit more if that's the case and then get off the end of my nose there so something like that and then let's say you know what this drag look just isn't doing it for me all right, so let's come in here and let's grab our erase tool at 100% opacity and get rid of this lipstick. I just don't like the lipstick, the lipstick. All right, so we can come in there and get rid of all of that yucky lipstick stuff. And let's keep the rouge on the cheeks because that gives me a little bit of spicy life. And then let's say, you know what? I'm more of a blue kind of guy. I don't like the green so much. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab my erase tool and let's say at 30% because I just want to get rid of 30. I don't want to get rid of all of it, just a little bit of that eye shadow. And so I'm just going to come in here and paint a little bit of that out of the green. That's good. I'm liking that. That blends a lot better, that blue with the green. It really gives that kind of 80s look to it, don't you think? So the erase tool is super, super important. Uh, you can use this in a lot of different ways if you just want to do one get rid of the whatever it is, you can erase it at 100%, or you can use it kind of like a paintbrush where you feather it down, where you bring that opacity down and you can paint out some of what you just painted in, all right? So it's just a push and pull between the brush tool and the erase tool. Alrighty, so our last Photoshop tool that I wanna to cover today is the pen tool. My absolute favorite tool for extractions. I use it on so many things to extract so many things, especially people. But for this tutorial, I'm going to come in here and use it just on the hatchet here. So the shortcut to the pin tool is your P on the keyboard. And of course you could come over here and you can see there's several different options for the pin tool. All right. And of course, if you want to flip through those options, you can just go to uh, shift P and that will send you through the whole list of pin tools. Now to get started here, and I'm not going to go into depth on the pin tool. I just want to show you real quick how you can use it. So let's extract just this blue part here. So I'm going to come in here and click and then bring that up there and then bring that here. And we'll save how to use this pin tool for a different time. Or if you want to go over to uh, patreon.com slash photillustrator. I have some really great tutorials uh, that will help the beginner of the pen tool uh, learn how to use the pen tool 
really, really quick and easy. Uh, it's a, such a good tool to use. And then I'm gonna bring that there and you can make the curves on these lines, which makes this tool so much more dynamic than trying to cut it out with the lasso tool, as you can see here. All right, so there, and then I'm just gonna make that selection. And then I have my selection there. And so I can copy that there, or if I wanted to, I can come in and add a layer mask right there. Or if I wanted to, I could go in here and add a hue saturation layer and then change the color of that handle, just like that. Super, super great tool. That is the pen tool in Photoshop. I highly, highly recommend uh, starting to work with that tool. And there you have it, the five Photoshop tools that every composite photography beginner needs to know so they can create amazing images. Like I said, however, there are a lot more Photoshop tools that you're going to have to learn to master your composite photography craft. So in the comments below, let me know what Photoshop tool you would add to this beginner list. Now, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so you can get more fun and informative videos just like this. And of course, next week's video where I will be showing you the difference between working destructively versus non-destructively in Photoshop, which is really the difference between working with less stress and frustration versus dressing the right the hell out because you might make a damn mistake. Just tune in next week and I'll show you.